GNJ has done a pretty good job of ensuring that there's diversity at the top. Yet, at the same time, it just seems that there is an obvious shortage of Asian leaders who are running companies today. Why do you think this is the situation and what can companies do about that? So J&J, by and large, has done a really good job with gender diversity. You know, as a whole, our workforce is about 48.5% female. Um, and it's the same when we go up to um, female with management responsibilities. When it comes to ethnicity, you know, and representation of geographical markets that we have in this region, um, we also have been quite successful in getting regional leadership from the region. Um, I think where there is definitely room and still working very hard on it is for our regional leaders, for example, our China leaders, our Korea leaders, our uh, you know leaders from Southeast Asia, Japan leaders, to go into global positions and take on significant global roles. Um, I think that is a lot of what needs to be done uh, for JJ and for many companies. So the question is why and what can be done when it comes to uh, Asian talent moving into higher positions and leading to global position, that number gets smaller and smaller over time for one, tough competition. I think the second thing here is also about um, uh, flexibility how can this flexible arrangement be more customized to individually at that phase of the career when these opportunities arise? So it may sound very um, general, uh, but I think the ability for companies to be more customized for the talent, but also at the same time for the talent to be, um, to be willing to consider a range of options during your assignment. For example, your first few years could be in US, your next few years after that position, you have a, a, a better hang of the ecosystem. This job could be done from the home country. Those are options that can only work if the two hands can come together and make a big applause, right? Meaning it works for company, it also works for the talent.